of baseball season can unwind like a fantastic story, usually different than the last or next. If you go back exactly 100 years, you'll find perhaps the greatest baseball season ever recorded. In this bird chatter video, we are going to turn back the clock 100 years to 1920. In 1920, the best pitcher in Major League Baseball was Grover Cleveland Alexander. Nicknamed Old Pete, he played from 1911 through the 1930 season for the Philadelphia Phillies, the Chicago Cubs, and the St. Louis Cardinals. Alexander made his Philadelphia debut during the preseason 1911 City Series, pitching five innings of no-hit, no-run baseball. He made his official Major League Baseball debut on April 15th. In his rookie year, Alexander led the league with 28 wins, a modern-day rookie record, 31 complete games, 367 innings, and 7 shutouts, while finishing second in strikeouts and fourth in ERA. From 1912 to 1921, Alexander led the league in ERA four times, including in 1920. Wins five times, complete games five times, and shutouts five times. A single season record 16 shutouts in 1916. Old Pete would win the pitcher's triple crown for a third time in 1920. He won the National League pitching triple crown in 1915, 16, and again in 1920. Alexander spent most of the 1918 season in France as a sergeant with the 342nd Field Artillery. While he was serving in France, he was exposed to German mustard gas, and a shell exploded near him, causing partial hearing loss and triggering the onset of epilepsy. Tiring of his increasingly drunkenness and insubordination that was often directly related to his epilepsy, the Cubs sold him to the Cardinals in the middle of the 1926 season for the waiver price. The Cubs manager Joe McCarthy supposedly said that even with Alexander, the Cubs had finished last the previous year. And if they finished last again, I'd rather it was without him. The Cardinals won the National League pennant that year and met the New York Yankees in the World Series, where Alexander pitched complete game victories in Game 2 and 6. According to teammate Bob O'Farrell, in the glory of their times, after the Game 6 victory, Alexander got drunk that night, and was still drunk when he was sent out to pitch the next day in Game 7. Alexander came to the game in the 7th inning after starter Jesse Haynes developed a blister. With the Cardinals ahead 3-2, and the base is loaded and two out. Let's see who it's going to be. It's going to be Grover Cleveland Alexander. All people will come on. The most unheralded in proportion to what he accomplished, in the words of the people who played with him and against him, is Grover Cleveland Alexander. He had been a great pitcher as a young man um, and had to overcome a lot of physical problems. Uh, he was an epileptic and was a very heavy drinker and, and that also could be a problem off the field. All the old timers I have talked to all my life put Walter Johnson and Grover Cleveland Alexander in the same category, the top two right-hand pitchers. Alexander, some people think the best pitcher ever. It suffice to say that if he was not the greatest of all pitchers, there was never anyone who was better. I guess the most memorable thing in his career came very late in his career in 1926 in the World Series against the Yankees. It was the seventh game of the World Series, which is always a romantic event, is started by Jesse Haynes, a knuckleball pitcher. The bottom of the seventh, the Yankees load the bases, two out. Haynes can go no further. His fingers are bleeding from throwing that knuckleball. Haynes uh, will be relieved, and I can't tell who's going to come in. It is going to be Grover Cleveland Alexander. All people will come on. He said there, there were younger men in the bullpen, fresher arms. In the sixth game, he pitched a complete game victory to even the series at 3-3 uh, at three to three for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. This was a legend walking in Ray afternoon, Yankee Stadium, walking in out of the mist. This was the man they believed in. Alexander, all people will come on. The veteran Alexander will try to put out the fire here in the last half of the seventh inning. And he got near the mound and Hornsby walked over to second base, met him as he came in, 
looked in his eyes and he said, Pete, base is loaded two out. Well, there ain't no place to put anybody as a Raj. He'll first be faced by Tony Lazari. Rookie, Tony Lazari. Hard-hitting, tough-minded, young second baseman. Again, the runners take their long two-out bases loaded leads. And he told Hornsby, I'm going to pitch the first one, fastball inside. And if he hits it, it'll be foul. And Hornsby said, no, you can't do that as a fastball hitter. And Alexander said, if I put it where I want to put it, he's going to hit it foul if he hits it at all. And then Hornsby looked at Alexander and said, well, who the hell am I to tell you how to pitch? And Alexander said, then I'm going to curve him low and away. One, two, three. And that's exactly what happened. Again, the runners take their long two-out bases loaded lead. Pitches. We're going to look for strike three. And that is all for the New York Yankees in the last half of the seventh inning as all Pete comes in in a situation that will go down as one of the most dramatic moments in all sports and strikes out, push him up, Lazari with the bases full. Into the mythological books of baseball history goes Alexander and his strikeout of Lazari, which a lot of historians like to look upon as the ultimate generational challenge in baseball history. With the Cardinals ahead 3-2 and the bases loaded and two out facing Yankee slugger Tony Lazari, Alexander struck him out and then held the Yankees scoreless for two more innings to preserve the win and give St. Louis their first world championship. From Bird Chatter, I'm Mike Allen. Subscribe to our channel for all our compilation videos. And you can see all of our artwork we use by visiting us on Pinterest.